Hello. <clears throat> so how many of you are entrepreneurs? Great. Um, so I'm going to make a couple of general remarks about how um, uh, I and my colleagues uh, see the world as venture capitalists. Um, the main uh, takeaway from this slide is that I think these numbers are way low. So the US represents about a third of the world's education spending. That much is accurate. Some people say uh, that education is four and a half trillion dollars of spending. Some say five, some say six. Um, the, the number, people disagree on the number uh, spent on corporate learning as well, but um, it depends on what you mean by corporate learning or learning in general. How much of your week do you spend learning? Is this an educational event here? What about managing, mentoring? What about a consultative sales process? What about just figuring out what is happening in your field? How much of your week do you spend on education? So um, the Georgetown uh, Center uh, for Research uh, on the Workforce came up with an estimate of $410 billion spent on informal corporate learning in the United States alone. I think that number is probably low as well. And it's possible to imagine a future in which we will be spending not 20% of our time on learning, but perhaps 80% in order to have our skills remain viable. How does this thing work? So, sorry? The other side. Ah, yes. Um, OK. Um, I, I think I missed a slide there, but um, yes. Um, I? Um, no. So um, uh, if you are pursuing an existing business model as an entrepreneur right now, you might want to think it, rethink it because the, um, <clears throat> the ground is moving under our feet. Uh, innovation in distribution models is going to be key uh, to success uh, going forward. Um, um, uh, we need uh, to recognize that um, most educational technology, uh, most student-facing edu educational technology uh, is not very good. Uh, you know, video, 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 quiz, PDF, quiz, no collaboration. That's not how students learn things. Have you ever watched um, uh, a group of um, young people playing uh, video games and using Discord to communicate with each other? Isn't it amazing, the energy level? How do we get that into uh, formal learning systems? I don't know. But I'm looking for the discord of education, for sure. Um, um, so um, I'm just going to stress uh, a couple of things here briefly. Um, unsolved problems. Uh, you should not be working on a problem that has been solved even semi-adequately. Um, and again, innovation in distribution. Uh, you need to think as much about that as you need to about your product or service. Um, so uh, this uh, slide more or less speaks for itself. I would say that um, you, know, you have um, up, up here at, at the top um, a tiny uh, 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 line saying a tiny feature. I don't know if you can all see it back there. Um, and you get down to a mission-critical platform and transformative big data at the bottom. But the actual percentage of startups uh, goes in the reverse direction. Tiny feature, 90%. Uh, mission-critical platform, transformative big data, 5%, right? So be ambitious. Um, I also wanted to say something about being in Israel. So there's been a lot of discussion um, among the entrepreneurs that I've talked to over the last three days about Israel being small and about Israeli edtech being a relatively nascent field and not getting a lot of attention from investors. Um, and I just want to make a, um, a comparison to the state of Utah in the United States. Um, two of the uh, best education technology uh, IPOs um, of recent years uh, have come uh, out of Utah in structure the leading LMS company now, and Pluralsight, which my firm was lucky enough to invest in. Um, 
uh, each one valued uh, north of a trillion. And Utah has a population of three million. It's substantially smaller than Israel. Um, and uh, in fact, the cities where most of the innovation happens, Salt Lake City is um, uh, half the size of Tel Aviv, uh, less than uh, a quarter of the size of Jerusalem. Um, how did they do it? They did it in part by talking um, among sectors. So people at the university level, um, uh, government, uh, K-12, um, local business people, all rowing in the same direction. So it's a hopeful model. Um, don't do this. Um, I counted in 2011 43 different companies pushing uh, digital textbook apps. That's too many. Um, there are a lot of really big unsolved problems out there. Start by thinking about big problems. Um, and uh, something that is unique to the U.S. is prisoners, educating people in prison. Um, lastly, um, deep personalization, the ostensible subject of my talk. So, um, all education needs to start by asking each student, who are you? What is it that you are passionately interested in? What is it you like to do for fun? And you may want to ask this in a subtle and indirect way, but what are you afraid of? What sort of traumas have you experienced? You need to educate the whole child. And you need, if one particular child is passionate about music, like the uh, wonderful gentleman who introduced me, um, you need to make the rest of that child's education meaningful in terms of music. You need to ask the student, um, uh, what do you think uh, someone who loves music might do as a grown-up? Yeah, you can be a musician, but you could also be a sound engineer or music journalist. Um, and so here are the steps you need to go through to get there so that fractions become not a random torture inflicted by adults, but something you actually need as um, a music engineer or a sound engineer. Um, and so um, you need multidisciplinary projects centering on music. You need a vision um, of how that child uses the educational institution for his own purposes, um, rather than constantly asking the question that uh, Esther was talking about that is so stressful to students. What do I need to do to get an A? What does the teacher want me to do? How do I get into Harvard? Which ultimately is not a very good question for producing successful adults. Thank you very much.